I have known our speaker this evening for over 16 years. Um, he is in private practice since 1981 to present day. He offers services in functional integrative medicine, chiropractic medicine, acupuncture, homeopath, clinical nutrition, laboratory evaluation and diagnosis, and energy healing. And he will address lots of issues about all of those topics this evening, I'm sure. Please help me welcome Dr. Benani. Can you hear me? All right, good evening. It is 6.35. How much time do we got, Mary? Midnight? I did get warmed up by about that time. Okay, where are we going? All right. Well, I've had a long day and I see a lot of people, so I'm almost talked out, but I think I'll have a little bit of time to talk to y'all. <laughs> well, it's nice to see everybody here. How many here are patients of mine? Or how many people have seen me in the past? How many here have heard me lecture in the past? All right, well, so we got a, about a 45, 65 group here. Tonight, I guess I'm going to be speaking upon cardiovascular events. Uh, I jotted something up on this blackboard here. Uh, my website is alternativeholistichealth.com. Telephone number 352-622-1151. You can go on there and knock your socks off. It'll probably take you a day or two to go through all the stuff. But there's a lot of things on there, and I don't have time to really delve into all that. We got too much to talk about tonight as far as cardiovascular health. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start and cover as much as we can cover, and I would like to take questions, because questions fit who I am and what I can do. Okay, because anyone can parrot slides and whatever, whatever, but the rubber really meets the road when you answer questions. That's the key. And some of the patients here know me very well. We've been patients and a doctor patient relationship for a long time. So let's get right down to it. <clears throat> First of all, in our system today of health care, we're in serious trouble. Um, Many people in this room, I hope, have a very unique feeling of what's happening in medicine today. Today, most people think of doctors as they trust them as politicians and lawyers, which isn't saying a whole heck of a lot uh, in our world today, but they dug their own grave, and so now they gotta stick in it. Because what has transpired in the last 100 years, from about 1920 to the present, is medicine, traditional medicine, has been taken over by the petrochemical pharmaceutical industry and the, and the insurance industry, okay? So if you take a look, and I'm just gonna spin just off, a little bit off key just a little bit. If you take a look at the three largest industries in our country today, number one is insurance, number two is petrochemical, number three is medicine. However, they're all intertwined. You see, if you don't have insurance, and you see your doctor, your doctor won't see you most of the time unless you have insurance. And your doctor then goes and submits your prescriptive activities and such to the petrochemical companies for pharmaceutical drugs, which are chemicals and they don't work. Medicine today, traditional medicine, has two functions. That's the block of receptor site in a cell membrane or shut down the enzymatic reaction in a cell or in the liver. In essence, what that means is it blocks symptoms, but it doesn't fix problems and causes. When you see your doctor today, and your doctor makes a diagnosis, the first thing you should say before they write a prescription or what have you is, doctor, <clears throat> what caused my problem. What is the cause? Because if you don't know the cause, how can you treat it effectively? And if they skirt the issue, it's your job to pick up your hind end and get that heck out of there as fast as you got in. Because in all probabilities, you're going to be treated for symptoms, not causation. 
And so what we try to do, and I've been in practice since 1981, so it's 43 years, I've seen over 20,000 patients. So I treat everything from acne to cancer and everything in between. But the general overall consensus is I pick up what we call medical wreckage. And that's the misdiagnosed and mistreated out there. And most of us out there have loved ones or we have also experienced these particular types of situations. You go to a doctor, you got a problem, you got five minutes if you're lucky. If you see the doctor or not, or maybe a second tier such as a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant, and you never really get to causation. Yep, you've got this problem, here's this medication, we'll see you in two or three weeks, have a good day. You walk out scratching your family and scratch your head at the same time saying, what was accomplished? What the heck happened? What's going on and what's gonna happen here? Not knowing the contraindications and secondary side effects of all the medications that you're currently taking. Because whatever there's an action, there's a reaction. And if you were here in the last seminar, <clears throat> you would know that we went down the, the rabbit hole, so to speak, all the way down to the basics of life, to the smallest particle of, of the life force, which is the atom. And of course, with the atom, you have, in the middle of the atom, you have the nucleus, and around the nucleus, you have shells where the electrons circulate around the shells. These electrons usually have either a right spin, a clockwise spin, or a left spin, a counterclockwise spin. Anything that you put in your body that's natural in nature, non-man-made, not touched pharmaceutical-wise or what have you, the electrons have a left spin or a counterclockwise spin, which then allows the atom to be active and functional. If you take in something that's man-made, synthetic or whatever, the electrons have a right spin, okay, or a clockwise spin, which then destroys the atom. There are roughly billions and trillions of atoms to make up a cell. Your body has 100 trillion cells. Each one of those cells has 100,000 enzymatic reactions that occur every moment of the day. So you have 100, 000, 100 trillion cells, which then in time produces tissues, organs, and organ systems. And with those, if you take in anything to disrupt at the lowest level, the atomic level, you then create a monster of effect. And it may take a week, it may take a month, it may take five years before it affects organs and organ systems. And then you have symptoms, you go to your doctor, and at that time, they're either going to treat organs or organ systems, and not going to go down the rabbit hole where it all started, and now we've got problems. Okay? So I just want to throw that out at you quickly, just before we got started into the meat of the whole conversation, to give you an understanding that the only person who cares about you is you. You are a billable entity to any doctor. Okay? You are a social security number and a billable entity to insurance. They don't give a fat rats, you know what, if you don't have insurance and whatever, because they have 10 other people that take your place. So it's behooving to you, and it's your responsibility to ask questions and to be proactive in your health. If you do not, shame on you. Shame on you. Because of the factor, you must be proactive because I have seen in the last three to five years an enormous insurgence of sickness and disease. Not only for the 55 and above crowd, like we're just a little over 55 here, most of us, uh, but I'm looking at kids today. Autism, attention deficit disorders, and stuff of this nature autoimmune diseases, endocrine conditions, pathology, cardiovascular events in kids, which is unheard of when we were kids. And that was a few years ago, okay? So things are changing. And in this room here, I think we pretty much, hopefully, all are on the same page, okay? The rest of them are out there in the hallway doing whatever that big party is out there. But that's the 80%. We call them sheeple, okay? You know, you can't fix stupid, as the old saying goes. However, 
The sheep are out there, and let them have fun. You're here to learn. And what I hope by the time you leave here this evening, you're going to learn some very, very valuable information on treating cardiovascular events. And when I talk cardiovascular, I'm talking things like this. Hypertension, heart issues, vascular situations such as CDAs or strokes, okay? These are very, very important facts because you see, Today, in our society, we're waiting for the end result to occur, but you see, if you know how to prevent this, to which you all have a better opportunity than your doctors into diagnosing and treating this on your own, okay? You can do it yourself. It's very simple. All you need is the tools and knowledge, because you know knowledge is power. Without knowledge, you're lost. When you go <clears throat> to a traditional office, they don't want to talk to you that much, you know? If they do a lab test and so on and so forth, they'll say, yeah, you know, you know, we go. yeah you're okay, we'll see you in six months. I have seen tens of thousands of lab tests that have come to my office, even this past week where the patients have come in with lab reports with findings that were either H for high or L for low on your levels, and the doctors say, there's nothing wrong with you. I'll see you in six months. And I'll say, well, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. It says right here, your TSH is elevated at 6.48, when it should be 1.8 to 3.0. You have hypothyroid disease. Did he tell you have hypo? No. Oh, okay. Well, well. Well, uh, your, your calcium level is at 14.2, when it should be no higher than 10.1. So what's going on with your parathyroid glands, or do you have a deficiency of your levels of vitamin D, and so on and so on. So I hear this all day long. It's like a broken record. One after another, after another, after another. So Mary asked me, hey, you want to come in and talk about cardiovascular? Yeah, we'll talk about, we'll talk about heart and so on and so forth today. But what I want to try to get across to you is, is this. There's nobody more concerned about your health than you. And if you're not proactive and you don't speak up for yourself, I don't care what the credentials are of a physician. I got more credentials than most physicians in this whole region. It doesn't matter. Do not believe anything I say unless I can prove it objectively because $4 plus an opinion will get you a cup of coffee. I think that's what it costs at Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, so well, I don't know what you tell me. But I'm just saying to you, do not believe anything you hear unless you have objective evidence to substantiate it. Otherwise, it's hearsay evidence. In a court of law, it wouldn't last long, okay? It wouldn't last long. So let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about hypertension. How's that sound? That's a good one. How many here on blood pressure medication? Raise your hand. One, two. No. You can at least have the guts to hang, put your hands up. Thank God. <laughs> so, so here's the deal. You go to your doctor, and you go in and you get checked, and all of a sudden, your blood pressure is high. Right? Okay. Very important. Do you know that the American Heart Association states that you cannot diagnose hypertension unless it's done on three different occasions, on three different dates? The patient has to be fasting a minimum of four hours before their blood pressure can be regularly checked. Why? Because when you eat a meal, one third of your blood is shunted to the splenic plexus, which is the digestive area of your stomach for digestion and you're running on two-thirds of a tank, blood pressure is going to automatically go up. You can have white coat syndrome, you know, doctor knees. Or you may have had a bad hair night with your spouse or your significant other, you know. Or you may have driven the car and someone may have cut in front of you and flipped you the bird and God knows whatever else happened. So blood pressure is like the wind. It's always changing. <laughs> Always changing. You can check it 50 times a day, you do 50 different readings. So, when you go to your doctor, 
How many here get their blood pressure checked with their left arm? How many here with their right arm? Which is the better one, right or left? Right arm. Right arm, never the left. Never the left. Why is that? Because the heart sits in the center of the chest. The aorta comes over. The aortic arch comes out. The first blood vessel is the right brachiocephalic artery. Then you have the right internal carotid, the left internal carotid, the left subclavian artery. By the time you check the left arm, you've got blood pressure already going to three other areas. So is it a true blood pressure? Nope. It's not. So when you go to your doctor, or whomever, your health care provider, and they want to check your blood pressure, it's like, give me your left arm. No, 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 no. Let's do the right arm. Let's do the right arm. Because you see, if they know their neuroanatomy and they know their anatomy of the cardiovascular system, they'll always use the right arm. Number one. Now, when you take blood pressure, you should take in both arms. Why is that? Anyone have an idea? Hmm? Why would it be different? Typically, typically the left arm should be five to 10 millimeters less in mercury than the right arm, always. Because it's already gone down three other areas. However, if the left arm is higher in systolic and diastolic pressure versus the right arm, you have a problem. It's called coarctation of the aorta. It's a conjunctal anomaly, birth defect. Now you got problems, okay? So that's important to know. Very important to know. Just some of those simple facts, okay? So never, when you go to a doctor's office or a healthcare provider's office and you come in, your blood pressure's a little high on that day, and oh, we gotta put you on some of your Centerpril and some all this other stuff. And you'll say, well, can we wait another day? The American Heart Association says you gotta take it three different days, three different times. Oh, and by the way, doc, I wasn't fasting. I had breakfast, okay? These are simple facts that we were taught in school that just slipped away, gone away. Because you see, the more that you've written on prescriptions, the, the pharmaceutical companies track these doctors, okay? I used to work in that same situation just a little bit. I've had my experiences. And the first thing I said, you know, uh, your sales of statin drugs, Doc, were a little low this month. Or blood pressure medication was a little low this month, Doc. What's going on? You know, Doc, uh, remember that, that car we gave you a three-year lease on two years ago? And, and all this other stuff. Yeah, so you see there's a lot of politicking going on. Keep that in mind. Medicine starts with M, and M starts for money. Money, okay? Now, I have nothing against traditional allopathic and osteopathic medicine. We need them. But they only handle about 10 to 15% of all that ails us. You know what it's good for? Acute or subacute injuries, such as, if I get into a car wreck, and I'm hemorrhaging, and I have a major trauma, I want to get my butt to a hospital, okay? If I have a stroke or a heart attack, hospital, that's acute or subacute. However, the other 85 to 90%, the chronic conditions such as cancers, autoimmune conditions, endocrine conditions, musculoskeletal problems, neurodegenerative problems in the brain, and so on and so forth, they don't have a clue. They can't diagnose it and they can't treat it. Now, who would you rather go to? Somebody that can do 90% or 10%? That's the key. You have to keep that in mind. Okay? They'll say, but da, da, my insurance will pay for it. My Medicare will pay for it. My, my supplemental will pay for it. My army uh, medication, what is it, what's that stuff? The Veterans Administration, so on and so on. They'll pay for it. Yep, they'll pay for it. Because they're in bed with the Texas Chemical Pharmaceutical Companies. I just asked quite, yeah, one question to patients. How much is your life worth, please? How much is it worth? If each one of you had this room full of $100 bills right now, packed, and you owned it all, and you had terminal, of terminal disease, how much would that money be worth if you did not, if you couldn't fix it, 
you could address it, we could cure it. You're worthless. Can't take it with you. Afterward, just the kids are going to fight over it. Anyhow, you're going to have all kinds of squabbles, all that kind of stuff, and thank God you're dead because God knows what happens afterwards with, with, with that like that. And that, there's horror stories then. You probably all know about those kind of things. So that gives you just a little bit of insight. So when it comes to hypertension, be very careful. Now, when it comes to high blood pressure or hypertension, they'll give you medication. They'll give you medication to lower the amount of fluid in your system, okay? And they'll give you medication to slow down the strength of the pumping of your heart, all right? So, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and, and the, the, the medications that lower your uh, dehydrates, you know, dehydrate your blood and so on and so forth, are the mainstays. But see, that's treating symptoms. What's causing the hypertension? That's the million dollar question, right? Because you see, the medication you're taking has secondary side effects. Now, if you take medications, make sure you go to Barnes & Noble or whatever and buy a book called Physician's Desk Reference, a PDR. Look up the medication before you fill the script. And look under the part called contraindications. Contraindications. That's the side effects. And see what happens. See what happens. Sometimes the contraindications are the same things you're having that you're treating. All right? The same things that you're treating are the contraindications. So make sure you understand that if you're going to take a medication, you need to know why you have what you have and you want to the cause, okay? Now, with hypertension, left unattended can cause stress on the arteries, okay? This increased stress in the arteries will then cause the artery, the internal level, the internal layer called the intima, to start to have stress applied to it which with that hypertension, then you have certain forms of white blood cells called macrophages that go in and they produce what we call mast cells, and it starts the cardiovascular event. However, however, you can prevent that from occurring. How many here have had stents? Stents. Bypass. Any bypassers? No? Okay. So, so when you're dealing with the, with the blood vessel, it's a very important thing to keep in mind. This blood vessel is nothing but a tube with layers, okay? There's actually three layers, all right? It's this outer layer here that gets weakened. And you know the cause of that weakness? What do you think the cause is? Any questions? Come on. A vitamin C deficiency. Write this down, Dr. Matthias Raff, MD, PhD, Germany. He was a protege of Dr. Linus Pauling, three-time Nobel laureate. <laughs> Dr. Raff says there you can we can prevent cardiovascular events and all cardiovascular diseases by taking in vitamin C, lysine, and proline. Okay? Now, if you do have a clot, you can do reverse the clot with vitamin K2, MK7, all right? So if you have a weakness in this lining because you're deficient in vitamin C, and you'll say, well, Doc, how much vitamin C do you need? And I'll say, well, there are three mammals in this world, on this earth, that do not produce vitamin C. Those three mammals have heart attacks, strokes, and aneurysms. That's man, guinea pigs and apes. All the rest of the mammals produce vitamin C. They don't have heart attacks, strokes, and aneurysms. Okay? So how much? One gram per 10 pounds of body weight. One gram is 1,000 milligrams per 10 pounds. So this young lady right here weighs about 100 pounds, so wow. She needs 10 grams. 
That's 10,000 milligrams. There's no way in hell you're going to take 10,000 milligrams in traditional vitamin C because if you take more than one gram at a time, you're going to have a dumping syndrome occur when it gets you the water or it's absorbed, and you're going to squirt like a goose. Got it? Because vitamin C is absorbed in the, the duodenum, all right? However, if you get a vitamin C that's absorbed in the stomach and bypasses the duodenum, you can take it. You can take it, and it won't cause that effect. Remember, vitamin C is critical. It produces chondroitin sulfate, that. Along with the most important mineral of the body, which is the most important mineral? Sulfur. Yeah, but you, you can't talk. You said wife. That's my wife over there. She's, she's not. And cereal is. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, sulfur is the most important mineral of the body. Yeah. 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 When you take sulfur and vitamin C, it produces chondroitin sulfate, which it produces all your connective tissue and so on and so forth. Extremely important. The second most important mineral is silica. All right? Then comes magnesium. Then comes potassium. Then comes zinc. Then comes calcium. And the rest of them splatter on another way. Okay? So do you know the basics of chemistry? and nutrition and so on and so forth, you'll have a better understanding of how to approach this stuff with rhyme and reason, okay? So let's say Sue over here only takes in 500 milligrams of vitamin C a day, enough for a guinea pig, okay? And so she's got some weakness of her blood vessels, she's got weakness of her blood vessels, and she's got a tear of the intima in one of the coronary vessels, because there's four of them. And then these macrophages, which are one of five, five types of white blood cells. You've got neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. The monocytes come in and they produce foam cells and they go into the middle port <coughs> And they produce this foam cell, this foam cell, and they pull these little spickles off, and guess what they grab? Cholesterol. Now, is cholesterol bad or is it good? Good. good. It's your friend. In Europe and the rest of the world, they say if your cholesterol is over 300 fasting, then they get a little concerned. In America, under 200. However, the American Heart Association said three years ago that the optimal level of cholesterol is 223 plus or minus 10%. Now, when I started my office in 1981, normal range for cholesterol was zero to 240. Got it? And in 1989, 1990, we had seven great masters of brilliance come together, and they formed this decision to which five of them were on pharmaceutical boards, and they said, oh no, oh no, we have to lower cholesterol under 200. Under 200. Now, <clears throat> up until 1989, the number one cause of death was cardiovascular disease. When that came out, the world came out and said, hold it, America, are you crazy? If you lower the cholesterol for human beings under 200, you're going to see a rash of cancer beyond belief. And within three years, cancer was number one. Because you better have that cholesterol at least, at least 200 to 240. That's normal. 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 I had a person coming into my office today, and her cholesterol was 182. And it said high on the lab test. High. Yeah. High says, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. High. Now, that, that's unheard of. So, so anyhow, Sue over here has this issue going on. She's got macrophages putting these foam cells. She's got these spickles coming out. And it's collecting LDLs, low-density lipids. Okay? And there are five of them that are the killers, apoprotein A, apoprotein B, okay? 
Give protein A to equal protein B, those are bad boys, okay? Because you see, LDL, low density lipid, goes to the liver, where the liver produces cholesterol, and picks up the cholesterol, and let's say she has an autoimmune disease, let's say she's got Hashimoto's, or she's got a problem with breast, and we gotta fix it. Well, the LDL takes the cholesterol and takes it to the organ that needs fixing. However, in her case, she's got a tear in her blood vessel, and her body has to heal it, otherwise she's gonna hemorrhage. Now, vitamin C, in the old days, when the sailors were coming across the big blue sea back at the time of Christopher Columbus and that, they go and sail for three, four, five months and they wouldn't have much fruit. They wouldn't get much vitamin C. They get a product called, they get something called scurvy. Scurvy, okay? So scurvy is nothing more than the blood vessels getting holes in them and you would hemorrhage out with scurvy. So, because we used to produce vitamin C a long, long time ago, our bodies now produce a plaque to stop us from bleeding to death because none of us here take one gram for 10 pounds of body weight. It produces apoprotein A. Apoprotein A. Uh, Apoprotein A, okay? So apoprotein A goes and blocks this right here, okay? But in so doing, when it blocks it, it causes clotting to occur, all right? Okay? Now, if you took enough vitamin C, you would need to have the apoprotein A to occur. But if you do produce a lot of apoprotein A, you can stop this situation to occur by apoprotein A because L-lysine and L-proline destroy apoprotein A. Write that down. Everybody should be taking L-proline and L-lysine every day to stop apoprotein A from healing the tears in our blood vessels due to a deficiency of vitamin C, which we classify as scurvy. Very, very important. Huh? What, in reverse? <laughs> L-lysine L and L-proline, two amino acids, act as agents that line the, the arterial wall of the artery to not allow the tearing to occur from apoprotein A. All right, you want to take that. That's critically important, all right? Along with the vitamin C. Okay, it's pretty simple. If, 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 God forbid, you do have these mast cells and these LDLs with all the cholesterols coming here, and now you got a soft plaque, it's like mushy, and then in time, you have in your body, you have bacteria that float around, that feed on this, that make it a hard plaque, and now you got a problem. You got a problem. Vitamin K2 destroys plaques. Holy smokes. Did I just kick the cardiovascular people in the body? <laughs> Vitamin K2. It destroys. Why? I've seen it happen. It's proven. No doubt. Vitamin K2. There's MK7 and MK4. Make sure it's MK7, it's got a 72 hour half life. MK4 has a 24 hour half life. If you're gonna take vitamin K2, make sure it's MK7. However, remember vitamin D3, a hormone, and vitamin K2 are antagonistic to each other. If you take vitamin D3 and not K2, you're just committing suicide. Because if you destroy the K2, two things occur. K2 keeps the calcium in bones, so you become osteopenic and osteoporotic, and that, then that calcium 
from a deficiency of vitamin K2 goes from the bone into the connective tissue, causing blood clots to occur. Vitamin K2, right? Now, when you take K2, the new, the new information coming, I've got to take K1 with it and K3 with it also. And I got a guy that's a supercharged super guy who is a smart son of a gun. He lives in the UP of Michigan. And he's sending me some special vitamin K2 with K1, K2, and K6. And I think there's another one also there, but the guy's done his research, he's done over 30,000 hours of research. Because when he was 52 years old, he went for a coronary CT scan. You know what those are? Yeah. How many here has had a, 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 a scan where they go in into the groin or into the hand and go on up? The classic scan, okay, you know. You know how many people die at a table having that done? Okay. I've had 10 die in my career that went in for just a, just a plain old scan to see whether or not they had coronary blockage. The problem is that when you have a catheterization, the old traditional catheterization, the dye can then go across the blood brain barrier and start causing problems about 30%. You start developing brain issues and so on and so forth thereafter. Do not get a, a, a scan of that nature. Now you can go get an ultra fast CT scan with a 64 slice CT scanner. It's called a coronary angiographic scan. They have them. You know what the cost is on your pocket? 400 bucks. 400 bucks. And you can do and check your four coronary vessels just like having a catheterization with no secondary side effects. None. None. Okay? And if you've got any issues, you can do with or without contrast. Now, you've got to have good, strong kidneys when you get contrast because the kidney's got to flush out the, the medium, the barium, and so on and so forth. So, like I say, very, very important things here that you have to realize that if you don't understand basics because see knowledge is power i never see any of you guys in this audience it doesn't really matter to me i'm busy telling us this now i want to make sure that you learn one thing if i can save one life in this room it's worth it this whole time that i'm donating tonight for you it's worth it one life okay because i'm sick and tired of the crap that's going on in traditional healthcare today. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Okay? So keep those factors in mind. Extremely important. Uh, and so on and so forth. So any questions thus far before I get into some heavier stuff? No oh, yes ma'am. Well, the vitamin C you want to take is water soluble, and you want to make sure it's absorbed in the stomach versus the, the wadnum, because you can't take more than one gram at a time before it flushes through your system. Okay. Huh? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a liposomal form, yeah. But, but you want to have it bound with something that will pick it through. See. I have a vitamin C that I use for my cancer patients because, see, vitamin C is the same thing as chemotherapy. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. I definitely do chemotherapy. Because, you see, when you do chemotherapy and treat a tumor, which is a symptom, it's not cancer, it's a symptom of cancer, but not cancer itself. When you treat a tumor, vitamin C at greater than 25 grams at a time, 25 or 30 grams, is oxidative stress, just like chemotherapy. The only difference is chemotherapy has an indefinite half-life. It keeps on going and going and destroying you. Vitamin C has a 72-hour half-life and it's gone. But in 72 hours, it destroys everything. That's why today, a lot of doctors today are starting to use vitamin C therapy, you know, drips, IV work and such. And they'll go and they'll put in 25, 30, somewhere it's up to 50 to 100 grams of vitamin C. However, when you take in that much vitamin C, you better have it buffered. Okay. Otherwise, it will sclerose your vessels when you put that needle in there, and your, your vessels will become hard like rope. And then pretty soon, they can't even stick a needle in there and draw blood anymore. Okay? 
So vitamin C is critically important, but it's got to be done the right way. Yes, sir. I'm taking over the count of 3,000 uh, milligrams a day. Am I basically wasting my time? Wasting your time? What, what, what kind of vitamin C? Yeah, well, you know, you're better off than the, more, the majority in this room. I don't know how many here are taking more. How many here take more than five grams of vitamin C a day? More than five grams. Great, great, great. Ten grams. Woo, Mary, you're a winner. You get both stuff. Yeah, it, it's important. Yeah, it, you're, it, something is better than nothing, okay? It's, it's better than nothing. There are some people, and remember, what destroys vitamin C? Oh, alcohol, caffeine, okay, sugar, all the good things, okay? So you don't even want to get me involved in that kind of stuff, because everyone knows me and coffee don't get along, along with tea. And you know what's worse than that? That's worse than coffee or tea, caffeine, chocolate, 22 times stronger per milligram, 22 times higher per milligram in caffeine than, than coffee or tea, chocolate. I don't care if it's dark chocolate from cacao from Ecuador. I still take it. No chocolate, no coffee, no tea. Woo! That really strikes you, huh? Especially the ladies. What's worse yet is alcohol. I got an article. You know who Joe Mercola is? Anybody hear Joe Mercola? I don't know who Joe Mercola. He wrote an article the other day on the ill effects of alcohol. There is no good amount of alcohol, no matter what is good for you. That destroys not only the water-soluble substances, but the fats too. And speaking of destroying fats, fat runs the body, sugar destroys the body. Sugar makes you fat, fat destroys your sugar, makes you skinny. That's backwards, which we all been told all of our lives. So let's talk about what destroys our fats. How many of you are on statin drugs? <laughs> statin drugs. Lipicor, Zolcor, all the cores. Yeah. All the drugs, all the statins. Wonderful. Wonderful. Because we got to lower your cholesterol. Right. Yeah. Well, a statin drug stops the production of cholesterol in the liver. Okay? Your brain is one third cholesterol. Vitamin D is made out of cholesterol. Did you know that? You have a breakdown of cholesterol called 7 dehydrocholesterase. And from 11 o'clock in the morning until 1.30 in the afternoon is when the the ultraviolet B radiation is at its highest, the stuff that burns you. But that converts 70 hydrocholesterol in the skin to vitamin D and nitric oxide. Huh? When you reach the age of 70, you can only produce 15% of the needed vitamin D in your body. So you could be outside, bare butt, all day long, and you ain't gonna produce it. You're gonna die. You need to take it. But remember, when you take that vitamin D3, you make chick darn sure you take vitamin K2 wood. But let's get back to my good friend, statin drugs. I love statin drugs. So these statin drugs are wonderful. Yeah. So they destroy cholesterol, hooray. Did you know that cholesterol produces pregnenolone? Pregnenolone then produces progesterone, one avenue. It goes down and produces cortisol, another avenue. Then it produces DHA, the next avenue. And that DHA produces testosterone and estrogen. If your cholesterol is down, how are you gonna make hormones? You know how you make hormones? Don't pay them. <laughs> wake up, guys. Wake up, wake up. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. So, so how can you make your how can you make hormones if you don't have cholesterol? Your brain is one third cholesterol. The myelin sheath of your nerves is made out of cholesterol. 
The 100 trillion cells of your body, the cell membrane, is cholesterol. So if you lower the cholesterol under 200, what are you doing? You're committing suicide. You're committing suicide. Simple. But let's walk down the road even further. Those statin drugs also stop the production of vitamin D3. Whoa. Uh -oh. What happens if vitamin D3 goes down? There's your immune system. If vitamin D3 is under 60, you're sick. If it's under 30, it's cancer, so food <coughs> rise. If you want an optimal vitamin D3, it's 80 to 125. Write that down. Write that down. 80 to 125, vitamin D3. And make sure you take it every day. And it's a 10 to 1 ratio with K2. 10 to 1 ratio. Because if you take D3 without K2, now you're really going to have problems with the cardiovascular system and the, your, your spine, your bones. You're going to have some serious, serious issues. Okay? Very, very important stuff. Oh, vitamin K2 is a fat soluble substance too. That's destroyed with statin drugs. Okay? CoQ10 is destroyed with statin drugs. Anybody here ever take statin drugs and you notice that they can't take because their legs are stiff and tight and they can't move and they're wobbling around and they're painful and all this. They say, Doc, I can't take this because my joints are killing me and my muscles are killing me. CoQ10 is destroyed. Okay? Vitamin A is destroyed. Vitamin E, cardiovascular system, is destroyed. Omega 3, 6, 9s, and 12s are destroyed. And the beat goes on. If you don't have these in your system, you are one sorry combo. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Big time trouble. All right? So, are these things good for you? Oh, well, yeah. They make billions of dollars for the petrochemical pharmaceutical company because you're coming in with the symptoms. They're saying, oh, well, she wins. We'll give you another drug. But just stay in your statins. How oh, long, Doc? For the rest of your life. They want you now. I've, I've heard in some cases, in some areas, they want under 150. That's 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 ludicrous. All right? It's not good. It's not good. So you see, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And all you got to do is have the guts to ask your docs, what the hell are you doing, Tom? What is that stuff? What are my side effects? Are the side effects worse than what the heck we're treating, or is it going to cause worse or problems? That's critical. Those are important things to keep in mind. Because if you don't take charge of your life, you got no life. You got no life. Life is pitiful. And you know, when you get to the golden age of 50 plus, I'm going to be good to everybody in this room. 50 plus. <laughs> It's, it's nice to enjoy life, especially from all the fruits of your labor and so on and so forth, all your life. You know, you work your tail off, you know, you give your money to the IRS and you give it to Ukraine and, and China and all this kind of stuff. You know, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Any questions on statins or anything of that nature? Yes, ma'am. Red yeast rice is good. It's good. But why would you want to lower your cholesterol? Why? Pardon me? Who's, who told you? Oh, really? When women have cholesterol over 250, the first thing that you look at is the thyroid. Nine times out of 10, when females have a cholesterol over 250 fasting, I'll look at the TSH, T4 total, T3 free, you know, it's usually thyroid. The LDLs will be up because the LDLs have to carry the cholesterol from the liver to go to the thyroid to fix the thyroid. It's just a, it's a normal defense mechanism to heal the thyroid. You stabilize the TSH, and I've had TSHs in my office greater than 150. Anybody here in medicine? Healthcare providers? Who? Yeah. Raise your hands. What happens if you have a TSH over 150? You take it to the emergency. 
Because if it's over 50, it's a heart, it could be a heart attack. If your TSH is over 150 for a long period of time, you have heart failure, and you can judge heart failure and die. I got over 150, and within one to two weeks, I got it down under 10 or less with natural products. Okay? Natural. Natural products. But when that one when that was at 150, I'd have cholesterol fastings of 300, 350, and they were going nuts on their cholesterol. Hell, I wasn't worried about that. I was worried about their thyroid, their thyroid gland, LDLs to the moon. When this dropped, this all dropped. It's simple. Your body is very smart. God didn't make you all to be fools. Doctors, we doctors don't even know how the body works totally. And the longer I'm in business, the longer I'm in practice, the more humble I get because I don't know shit compared to what I was taught. You know why? Because it's energy, light, biophotons. Look up Fritz Alfred Pop, 1996. He blew the doors off of traditional medicine and biochemistry. Everything is light, light therapy, biophotons, Fritz Alfred Pop. He should have won three Nobel Prizes in Germany, but because he went against the rules, they crucified him. Just like the man in England who found out that the MMR vaccine caused autism. Andrew Wakefield, MD. Anybody hear about Andrew Wakefield? <laughs> so what I'm saying to you is, is this. Make sure, make sure you understand the science behind anything before you take something. Because if it is a man-made substance, what does it have around the, what, what, what kind of spin around the, the, the uh, nucleus? Light spin, bad. Natural, boom. So doc, what do I eat? I'll say, you know what, here's the best way to learn. Anything that has a label to it, don't eat it. Anything that has a label, don't eat it. It's got a label on it, don't eat it. That makes it easy. Some people say, well, if it's white, don't eat it. You know, if it's got sugar, don't eat it. No, just if it's got a label, don't eat it. What's that leave you? Meat, vegetables, fruits, no labels, okay? Remember, sugar's gonna kill you. So let's talk about lab work. Anybody, oh, question. I'm sorry, I just, okay, so because I'm diabetic, yeah. They want my staff my LDL. They want my LDL under seventy. Under seventy. Under seventy. Wow. What's your cholesterol total? Uh, it was one something total this last time. One something, something total. One, one, I don't know. I can't remember. I just had it. I should remember. Under two hundred. It was under two hundred. Two hundred. Yes. How old are you? Sixty-eight. Okay. If you're un if you're seventy years or older and your cholesterol is under two hundred. The chances of having cancer are tenfold greater. If you're 70 years old or older and your cholesterol is under 200, the chances of dying of a, either a viral or bacterial infection are fivefold greater. You tell your doctor, uh uh. Uh uh. But I did just have two cents, three cents, no, four cents. <laughs> yeah! You didn't know. You I need them. I did. You didn't need them. You could have fixed it yourself. 80% blockage? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had a man who had 100% blockage. Of the, of the left descending, anterior descending, the big one. 100%. And within one and a half years, 100% clean. 100%. I've had patients come into my office that have had clots in their legs. And they were on warfarin, Eliquist, all that stuff. Two quotes. Fit in the blood, but there's see there's nothing in medicine that can break clots up. Vitamin K2 does. Same. And I worked with this guy, and every month we'd send him in for a bilateral ultrasound of the lower extremity to see how he's doing. And after about what was it, year? Six months, year, nine months, year, damn. Gone. Gone. Normal. Normal. Okay? If you take a look at the contraindications of the stuff, it's unbelievable. Because you see, here's the thing. You had four steps put in, right? What caused it? My diet. Your diet? <laughs> Are you sure? It's your diet? Are you no, sure? No, I'm not sure. What's your homocysteine level? I can't tell you right 
Did you ever, did they ever do a homocysteine yeah, on you? Was it done on a post provocative level with methionine, which because if you don't do methionine to post provocative, listen, listen very carefully. Methionine converts into cysteine. You have to have vitamin B12, B6, and folic acid in order to convert methionine to cysteine. Extremely important. If you have an MFHTR defect, which means you cannot absorb folic acid, okay, that's 40% of the American public. If you have one of those particular defects where you cannot absorb B12, cytocobalamin, you might have to have methylated, methylcobalamin or hydroxycobalamin, okay? If you have an MFHDR defect, you can't absorb folic acid, it has to be 5 tetrametrohydrofolate or folic acid. And if you can't absorb B6, it's gotta be P5P, a methylated form. If you have one or any of those three in combination, listen up. If you have any one of those three in combination, homocysteine, you're gonna listen to this stuff, he's got it all taped. All right? You're gonna have this, you're gonna have that methylation. And you know, that is over 70% of all cardiovascular diseases. Heart attack, stroke, today, reasons. B6, B12, folic acid deficiency. Because people can't absorb this stuff. 40% can't absorb folate. And if you're pregnant in the first trimester without folate, guess what you have? A child, cleft palate, Down syndrome. See? So simple. Okay. Yeah. What, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, we have a quick question back here. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, tell me about NAC and selenium. What? NAC. NAC, N-acetylcysteine? Yeah. Yeah, N-acetylcysteine is a precursor to glutathione. Got it? You can take it, that's good, because it'll turn into glutathione if you have a good functioning liver, but why not take liposomal glutathione and cut all the BS out and go right to the store, source? You can take glutathione, you can't take it in pill form, it's gotta be a liquid form, it's gotta be liposomal on the glutathione, all right? So you can go and absorb it because if you do it sublingually, it goes right to the brain to clean out the brain. You got more than two brain cells? <laughs> Good. Three. Three for Siri. Anybody got four? Four and four, 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 five, five, five. <laughs> we have fun in my office, as you can see. It's not even a practice anymore, it's fun because it's, it's, a, it's a mission for me. It's a, it's a healing mission. She's an ordained minister. She's ordained. I'm ordained. But I'm the I'm the bishop. Watch out. Carries the sword. Now, we, we, we deal with life the way life is. Because when I look at each one of you, if you were a patient, I'd come to you and say, listen, I want you to treat me like I'd want you to treat I'd treat you. No more, no less. You BS me, buddy, I'm out of here, okay? because I can smell a rat a mile away, all right? And I'm not gonna believe anything I hear in 50% of what I see. You better be sharp, and you better know your science, and you'll be able to back it up with objective evidence before you're gonna poison me or do something to me that I, and you don't even know what the side effects are. Like that poor little lady back there, she's got four stents, right? You know how long those stents are gonna last you? One to two years if you're lucky, and they're coming back. Darwin. They're going to do it again and again and again. I've had people have come in with four, five, six times they had stents or bypasses. The first time they go for the sap in his veins. Then they got to go up to the lungs after that if they can do it a second time. But the third time, you're done. You're done for a bypass. Okay? So I'm just saying to you wake up. Wake up. Take responsibility. Because after tonight, don't ever say that you never were told that you've been put unnoticed by me. <laughs> That's it. So, so let's talk about lab tests. Woo, lab tests, lab tests. Anybody here work in a lab? Anybody here know about laboratory work? Uh-oh. Okay, so we do a hell of a lot of lab work in our office. We do probably more lab work than anybody around through Quest. And then we do the functional lab works because we want to know exactly what's going on. I don't want to guess. I don't guess. I don't guess. 
Because if I guess, I got to live with that. I don't want to see you sick. And so I got a conscience. And so when we do lab work, it's important. Like if you're dealing with cardiovascular, every year you should have a test done. And when you do your test work, you should have your, you can do your thyroid panels, which is your T3 free, your T3 total, T3 uptake, T4 total, T4 free, reverse T3, thyroid peroxide antibodies, thyroid globulin antibodies, TSH, and thyroid binding globulin. That's a lab test for just your thyroid. If that's not done, you didn't have a good test done. But when you do lab work, you do, you do your lipid panels, you check your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your LDLs, your HDLs and such, and if there's a little bit of abnormalcy, then you can also then go and do your fractionization panels for you know, breaking down your LDLs and so on and so forth. But if you want to know what's going on with the heart, there's always a test. It should be an HSCRP, high sensitive cardioceractive protein. HSCRP, that's mandatory. Fasting insulin, fasting insulin every year. Okay? Because we know that if your insulin levels are elevated, that's the number one cause of diabetes. It's not type 1 or type 2, it's insulin resistance. There's five types of diabetes type 1, type 2, insulin resistance metabolic syndrome and syndrome X. Five types of diabetes, okay? This is a killer. If all doctors did these two tests, okay, along with a, with, along with a CPK, <coughs> that's called a creatine kinophosphate test, an LDH or LA, uh, LD, it's called lactodehydrogenase test, okay, you would prevent 50 to 75 percent of heart disease in this country today because you can pick it up in advance. If there's questions, then you do a propropin T. You can do a fasting, uh, a fasting fibrinogen. You can do a huh? A pro BNP. See, I taught her well. Pro BNP. <laughs> A pro BNP, all these tests. You can do all this blood work and you can pick up what's going on in your heart, your cardiovascular system, way before you have all these scans. And if you have any doubt from that point, if that's elevated, then you go and do a coronary angiographic evaluation. It's a simple CAT scan, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes. It scans the heart. If that comes back abnormal, then you can repeat that test with and without contrast. It's the same thing as having a catheterization. Same thing. All right? Keep that in mind. Be in charge. Tell your doctors exactly what you're talking. Your Medicare won't pay for it. Well, I don't give a damn what Medicare is going to pay for it. This is my life, not yours. This is what I want done. I don't care what Medicare is going to pay or what it's not going to pay. This is what you want to have done. These are just basic, simple tests that you can run. And I would first start here. The normal HSCRP is 0 to 10, deals with heart. Anything greater than 10 is inflammation or infection. So if you're between 0 and 1, you have a low cardiovascular event. If you're between <coughs> 1 and 3, you're an average, and if you're between 3.1 and 10, you have a high cardiovascular risk. High cardiovascular risk. Boom. That comes back elevated. Let's say you're between, let's say you're at 4.5. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got a problem. Got it? And your fasting insulin is elevated. Uh-oh. We got a problem. See? And then you say, well, let's do a CPK. Because there's three breakdowns on that one. One for the brain one for the muscle, and one for the heart. Now we know here, we only do, in your case, it'd be what? Muscle and heart. We wouldn't have to worry about brain, right? Okay. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. 
So, so that's what I'm saying to you. It's critically important that you realize this stuff because this is just simple everyday stuff that I see these lab tests from all these fancy doctors. They don't do nothing. They don't do shit. Nothing. Nothing. They don't even know how to read a CBC with differential anymore. Okay? So I'm, I'm sitting there saying, holy smokes, what are we gonna, what's happening in America today? Why are our people so sick? And I pick you up in the end, this medical wreckage, and I have to unwind the crap. And you're sitting back and say, holy smokes, why was I told this 15, 20 years ago? Huh? And that's, that's just how that works. Any questions on blood work? Why doesn't the doctor prescribe those tests? Because Medicare won't pay for them. And then people won't get them, even if they request them. Well, that's, that's, for the, that's, for the, that's for the patient to say. Look, Doc, I know that these tests are critically important. Why don't you run them? I have work coming here from cardiovascular specialists, and they don't do it. Endocrinologists, internists, and so on and so forth. No one runs these tests. I run it routinely. Routine. It's basic. Basic stuff. Routine? That's her job. What's the cost? She, she knows. She, she Let me look at my list. Ah, uh, geez, I don't know. I mean, something like this, probably 15, 20 bucks. Okay, passing insulin, five, 10 bucks. CBC with differential, three bucks. And they're making money on me. Okay, CPK, you can do it with, or you can break it down to isoenzymes, all right, if that's elevated. But you don't blow, you don't go, you don't shoot an elephant. I mean, you don't shoot a mounted elephant rhino with a special rifle. You start with the basics. If things come back abnormal, then you clue in. It's like when I, it's like shooting a shotgun. When you shoot a shotgun, you got a spray going out, right? Now, if I find something in that in that area that's hit, then I come back with a rifle, boom, come in with a bullet to clue in on that stuff. But yeah, this stuff is cheap, 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 cheap. But no one does it. Because, let me tell you something, if they were to find your cause, treat your cause, the hospitals would shut down. Got it? Got it. Got it. Yeah, back there. Um, why do um, doctors tell people that pre-diabetic, what does that exactly mean? Pre-diabetic. Hemoglobin A1C. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got sugar. You got fasting glucose, which changes all the time. Then you got hemoglobin A1C, which checks your blood sugar for the life of a red blood cell, which is 120 days, okay? Normally, hemoglobin A1C is under 5.7. So let's say, but you're, let's say you're between 5.7 and 6.5. After 6.5, that's diabetes. So if you're in that gray zone between 5.7 and 6.5, you're pre-diabetes. If they do a hemoglobin A1C. Well, when people hear that, then they say, I'm not diabetic. I mean, mentally. Huh? They think they're not diabetic. Right? You're they may not be. Not. But what controls your sugar level? What controls your sugar? Anybody know? Nope. Nope, 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 Adrenal glands. Who, who said that gets the gold star for the day? Adrenals. If you don't eat sugar, does it matter? Yeah, it does matter because you know why? If you take in more than 60 grams of protein, that excessive protein turns into sugar. So if you go out and eat a steak, and it's more than eight ounces, let's say you want to eat like, like a wolf, <laughs> that extra protein is going to be turned into sugar, so it ain't no different than you know, uh, a Twinkie afterwards and a ho ho and a ding dong. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 60, 60 grams of protein, boom, turns into sugar. Yeah. Chelation therapy. Chelation, okay. What about so What are your thoughts on that? Chelation therapy is important. Now, Listen carefully. When Keele, Dr. Gary Gordon, MD, DO, PhD, Phoenix, Arizona, he's the grandfather of chelation therapy. 
Gary said about 10 years ago that traditional IV chelation therapy is archaic. It's garbage. Because you go to your doctor, and they'll say, oh, we gotta give 40 chelation treatments at 200 bucks a pop. That's a hell of a lot of money because your insurance ain't gonna pay for it, right? Right. The problem is, Gary said they did thousands of studies and they found that, okay, let's say you have atherogenesis or atherosclerotic plaques, okay? And you got parting of the arteries. You know what? You know what they found out? It really didn't do anything here at all. But what it did is it caused vasodilation. So the blood vessel dilated, so the person felt good, but they never got rid of the plaque. Got it? Chelation therapy is to get rid of heavy metal toxicity, not to get rid of plaques. So if you have mercury, aluminum, cadmium, barium, cesium, tin, arsenic, you're in deep stool. Because you see, if you are deficient in your essential elements like your calcium, potassium, sodium, magnesium, and so on and so forth, and you're high in these other ones, and you need those to run your enzymatic reactions, you know what's gonna happen? If you're low on potassium and sodium and sulfur and magnesium, and you're high on, on the bad boys, the bad boys are gonna take the place of the good boys, and now you're in deep stool when it comes to your enzymatic reactions. That's how disease occurs right there. So when you do chelation therapy, chelation therapy, was only meant to dispose of heavy metals. And when you do chelate, to which I've had you have or whatever, never ever chelate <laughs> until you're on a heavy regimen of essential elements and minerals. Because if you don't, when you chelate, it's indiscriminate. It takes out the bad plus the good. And I have people come to my office after they come to these doctors here in the villages, and there's one one we all know in the villages that does a lot of chelation. Oh, Doc, I'm having chelation, but I feel like a train wreck for a week afterwards. Yeah, because they never prepared you. You can't chelate unless your body is built up with your essential elements. Otherwise, when you take out the bed, you're taking out the good. And if you don't have any good, you're in deep school. I can tell you a story, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I, can't, I can't tell you the story. It's too close. It's too close to home around here. I've had people who've chelated, and we put them on a special drink called the morning drink. It's got everything in the kitchen sink. It looks like crap, it smells like crap, tastes like crap. Right, Mary? Yes. <laughs> and if you don't take the morning drink, you don't chelate. Because if you chelate and you don't build the good up, when you're taking out the bad, I get a phone call. Doc, I'm in the hospital. What's up, Doc? I think I'm having a heart attack. <clears throat> well, what's going on? Well, they gave me an infusion of magnesium citrate, and now I feel good. I said, ah, are you still connected? Yep. You taking your morning break? And there was a, there was a, call, there was a pause. And I said, uh-oh, uh-oh. I got it with their pants down. And needless to say, that's what happens. So wherever there's an action, there's a reaction. You've got to be very, very, very careful because chelation, whether it's done with IV, you can do it with rectal chelation, you can do it orally, okay? If you don't have the normal essential elements and the minerals built up properly, you will get in serious trouble, serious trouble, serious, I mean serious. Atrial fibrillation, how many here have atrial fib? Anybody here? Atrial fib, PVC, all that good stuff. Oh my God, holy smokes. <clears throat> Remember this, write this down, three organs, three things. The, <coughs> the thyroid stores iodine. The adrenals store vitamin C. The heart stores magnesium. You need 10 milligrams of magnesium for one pound of body weight. 
10 milligrams for one pound of body weight. Yeah. yeah. A lot of magnesium. Now, if you take it in the wrong form, you're going to be worse than vitamin C. You'll be squirting all day long and all night long. And you will have what they call a culo rojo. You know what that means? Culo rojo? My wife can tell you what culo rojo means. Culo rojo. <laughs> Yeah, so so, mega. so there's different forms of magnesium. The best form is magnesium pionate and magnesium glycinate. You don't have all of the issues that go on with that. But you need it. And I'll, you give me any person that comes in this, in, in my office, and they have, oh, I didn't need something. Okay, no problem. Let's give you a lot of magnesium. I have it in liquid form. I got it jacked up to the moon in liquid form. It goes right into the system. I have it in pills. I got everything. And you know what? Within a week or two, Normal. Normal. Magnesium. Yeah. There's a question? Yes, ma'am. Do you have like a general like a multivitamin or drink or whatever? If you don't have like ten tablets of all these I have four rooms full of stuff, sweetheart. <laughs> Everybody's different. What's the magic item? Uh, you want the magic pill. No. <laughs> Yeah, we have we have a few things. <laughs> we got a few things. Magnesium glycinate is a great form. It does not cause as much irritation to the bowel, so you're not going to have the diarrhea. Magnesium pionate is better because it crosses the blood-brain barrier and it activates it activates melatonin, and it helps to heal and clean the brain up. So the glial cells that get rid of all the poison to the glial cells, to the lymphatics, which then leads into the lymphatics, and out it goes. Magnesium phenate, that's the new kid on the block, that's the best. Best bang for your buck, it's expensive. Magnesium phenate, phenate. Glycinate's the best, it's cheaper, but it's good. It's a good bang for your buck. You know, if you, yeah, I just said it on you. Yeah. How do you spell phenate? Phenate. I don't know. I'm not a secretary. No, is it a P or a T? Theonate. T H I E N A T E. Theonate. Magnesium theonate. Good help. It's R E O N A T E. Threonate. Threonate, yeah. Ask Siri. Anyone here go on on it? Siri? That's Siri. If I don't know it, I'll find it. Yeah. And you sometimes, if she has a battle with Siri, yeah. I, I, I'm surprised you talk to me like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, anyway, yes. Yeah. 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 Why? Why? Probably uh, what? Can you speak up? But 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 if but if the but if what caused his what caused this what caused the problem? So now you're gonna give him a poison to cause other issues too. So if you take a blood thinner, it causes you to have an issue with with your blood vessels so that they start to get thin. And then I had a lady come in today, she she's on Eloquist, a blood thinner, right? And she says, Doc. From my wrist to my elbow, I bruise like a banana. Since I've been on Eloquence, I says, well, gee whiz, I wonder what's going to happen if you get into a blunt car injury, or you have, she says, when I get stuck and I bleed, I can't stop my bleeding. I says, well, what's your clotting factor? Because normally you should clot, if I'm not mistaken, between one and three or 2.5 seconds. But when you got an Eloquist, your clotting factor goes to about 3.5 to 5 seconds. That's not good. That's hemorrhage time. Okay? But when they put them on Eloquist, why? If stroke from what? From what blood clot? He didn't have a blood clot. He just had AFib. He had a magnesium deficiency. So you're going to cause something now to occur. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
can take soup and don't say hold on. Well, yeah, I mean, what, why are these, why is he on eloquence if he didn't have a stroke? If he had a, if he had a fib, what caused it? Well, yeah. Do a red blood cell analysis of magnesium. A red blood cell analysis of magnesium. It'll probably be down in the cellar. Why don't they do that? Because it, they, they don't want to fix nothing. Smell the money? Smell the money? Yeah, smell the money. Okay. It's, like, it's awful. It's all there is is magnesium. Think about it. It's simple. When we were put on this planet, did we? Did God put CVS, Rexall, Walgreens, and stuff on every corner here? No. He said man would have everything available to us to take care of us. We just got lazy and brainwashed. And, and, and we, we bought, we drank the Kool-Aid. Well, a lot of you did. I didn't, but I mean, a lot of you did. Okay. So all I want to do is just give you some information. Say, hey, wake up. Wake up. Wake up, wake up sheeple. Wake up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sir, uh, no, there's a thing called airborne. What? Airborne. What about airborne? You mean Air Force? Airborne. Airborne? Airborne for the air, spreading in the air. Oh, you're talking about chemtrails? No, no. No, no, no. it's the air. Vitamin C for preventing COVID. Okay. You've got to come closer. I'm getting old. I can't understand what you're saying. I chopped to be right now. That's about airborne. Yeah, airborne. Okay, what about it? Well, you know, they say before you come, Oh, you're talking about air? Yeah, 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 because see, that's recirculated stuff. That's nasty, particularly when those jets and stuff come from foreign countries and they got to spray them up inside. The stuff they use to spray them and clean them is unbelievable. There was a lady we used to work with, she passed away. Nancy? Anyone remember Nancy? Nancy Jenkins? Mary does. A lot of you guys know Nancy. Nancy worked for uh, Delta. And she used to fly all over the world. My wife used to work for Argentine Airlines for 15 years. She flew all over the world too. And when you fly to different countries and different continents, you have to spray these airplanes down. Oh. I never heard of it. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good. It's like Elk or something? Oh, it's good. Oh, shit. We're going to have a beer after this, you know. I lost this guy. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, if it's got, if it's got vitamin C in it, it's good. I don't know, you know. How much vitamin C? Okay, do it. Vitamin C is vitamin C. I mean, you know. Okay. If it's good, yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's a form of vitamin C, it's a form of vitamin C, you know? Whether you take it in a liquid form, or like a soul form, a tablet form, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, a gummy bear. Oh, you should have said that. Okay, okay. Like an Elka Seltzer. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. Wonderful. Ooh. Yeah. Airborne. Super. Yeah. No. <laughs> what is it? Okay, good. What is white in the city? Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Okay, we got it. What's your name, by the way? Jack London. Jack London. You're not you're not you're like Mr. L the guy who's the famous guy, the writer, you're not the London from X. Well, you could be a son. Okay. All right. 
Yeah. Okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do we see God here? That's fine. Thank you. I have the $40,000 question. Yeah. Forty thousand? Yeah. Who's so, got fifty? <laughs> so why do insurance companies? I mean, do they get that much kickback from pharmaceuticals that they would rather cover you and your health issues by not doing all this? Than buying my going to the vitamin shop and getting vitamins and minerals and supplements in lieu of all this that could lead to hundred thousand dollar operations or whatever. You mean what I do versus you go to a vitamin store? No, what? Why don't insurance cover these things? Like the stuff I take, they don't cover. The insurance won't cover. They would rather pay for all this medicine. The the number one company on the planet is. Insurance. Number two is petrochemical. Number three is medicine. They're all in bed together. They're all in bed together. That's why they have to have reps. Huh? They have reps. They go out there and have drugs. I've seen them. They look great. They're beautiful. <laughs> there was another question? Yes, ma'am. Low what? Cholesterol. Low cholesterol? Well, what's causing it? Are you on statins? Are you sick? Do you have autoimmune disease? Do you? Well, how do you know that's not it? How do you know you don't have cancer? What's your low, what's your cholesterol level fasting? 120. 120? You're a sick puppy. Anything under 130 is cancer is open otherwise. Anything under 160 is sick. Okay? You need to get checked out. Come see me. Doctor, yeah. I had a friend who was in a wreck. She was hospital for you. Was it a woman? A woman. Oh, what the heck? There's always women that are anorexic, ain't it? They want to look good. They want to shake in the shower and get wet. Huh? Her cholesterol was like 350. Her cholesterol was 350? What was your thyroid function? I don't know, but I mean, she's still living. <laughs> Very resilient. Her cholesterol was 350. Yeah, they said it was hereditary. No. Just, and here's something about genes. Let's talk about genes, you know, not Levi's, not, not you know, Wrangler. We'll talk about genes, okay? Okay, so you got genes, okay? You got a pair of genes from your mom and a pair of genes from your dad. You sound like somebody I knew at one time. There we go. Okay, so in between, we have 25,000 genes. 25,000 come from mama, 25,000 come from daddy, okay? Now, these genes are controlled by proteins, these large things called SNPs. SNPs. And what they are is long chains of amino acids. Got it? Now, these genes, you can turn a gene on and turn a gene off, just like a, like a dimmer switch on light. Got it? So when a doctor tells you it's genetic, say BS. Because you can turn them on, you can turn them off. To give you an example, let's say this woman right here has a BRCA1 and BRCA2 positive, which means breast cancer. And she had an identical twin. And she grew up in Orlando, and this, her identical twin grew up in Seattle. Total different environments. Her identical twin has breast cancer. She doesn't have it. Why is that? They're identical. They should both have breast cancer. No. It's the environment. It's nutrigenomics, your nutritional status, and epigenetics. Epigenetics, meaning EMF exposure, glyphosate and so on and so forth, outside sources and so on and so forth, because when you change these SNPs, and remember, these are nothing more but long chains of amino acids, amino acids, and there's 24 amino acids that make up your protein group, 24. If one or more of these amino acids goes on a key, it fires these genes off, and now you've got a problem. You've got a problem. But if you take proper nutrition, you'll never fire these genes off. I don't care what the heck you got as far as your, if you're homozygous or heterozygous, meaning a 50-50 chance or 100% chance of having a disease, 
it's not going to matter because these genes will never fire off if you know how to handle it and you control it. So genetics is BS. BS. You know what that stands for? Bovine feces. <laughs> you know what else that stands for? Bovine feces. Another question. Yes, ma'am. My fairy tale never go above four. Number four? You got a leak. You got a leak. Yeah, but you got to leave. Either you have an issue with your your GI tract. Oh uh, yeah, you didn't have the right test. <laughs> you didn't have the right test, okay? Because you see, ferritin is 99 percent of your iron level. Iron, iron body capacity, and the percent of saturation is only one percent of your total iron. It's the ferritin that counts. When your ferritin's at four, you're not, you can't store it. What's your hemoglobin level? Uh huh. And it's under normal. It should be between 14 and 16 on hemoglobin. What's your red blood cell count? Okay. Usually when ferritin's low, you got a leak. What happens if you have H. pylori? Ah uh, yeah. How was it tested? Both that's wrong. It's an infallible test. Garbage, beep, you lose. Okay, all right, it's the wrong test. It's no good, it's invalid. It's invalid, okay? Huh? What do you test for? You do a fecal sample, you check it. You check for each pot away with DNA. Check it the right way. Yeah. You got a leak, you gotta come see it. Yeah? Um, eating plants. Eating plants? Plants, P-P-L-A-N-S, ketogenic, yeah. Intermittent fasting. What Super. I think it's great. You should eat more than one or two meals a week. A day. A day. A day. A day. A day. <laughs> I declare that now. <laughs> yeah. And, and fats burn fat. Sugars make fat. It takes more energy to burn fat than you get in the, in the end result. So a ketogenic Mediterranean diet. Meat, vegetables, okay. Fine. Coconut oil is good. It's trans, trans, uh, trans fatty acid. You know, it's like a triglyceride. It feeds the brain. You know, if you've got brain problems and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's excellent. Intermittent fasting. Most people should only eat one meal a day. One meal a day, two meals max. Except if you have hypoglycemic, like these two girls over here. They got to eat like damn all day long. <laughs> You gotta feed the world. I think they got parasites. Okay. Yes, sir. One word on placebo. 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 Well, placebo is is a person buying something that's really not true. You know, in the old days. Yeah. In in the old days. When people were, quotes, maybe hypochondriac, they would give people things like sugar pills. But when they got the medication and they walked out with a pill in their hand, it made a heck of a difference. The mind can control the body. You can die by thinking you want to die. If you think you're sick, you will be sick. The power of the mind is unbelievable. We don't even have a clue what this thing can do up here. We only use about five to ten percent if we're lucky. But you're dead on. And remember, the body works on energy. It's light. Bio, biochemistry, back before 1996, said that all actions or reactions were boom, 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 all this biochemical, right? But if you ate something, and by the time that came to your toe, you'd be dead. It's a biochemical reaction. But if it comes in a form of light, in a form of biophotons, light travels 186,000 miles per second. 186,000 miles per second. So we could do applied kinesiology, and I could put something in your mouth and check you, and you could tell me whether or not you need it or you don't need it. That kind of bum, nothing. Yes, sir. Red light therapy. Excellent. Excellent. 
You got, you got, you got, you got infrared, near infrared, far infrared. Near infrared is good. Remember, near infrared and far infrared stimulates the mitochondria. It produces, it produces in the mitochondria, okay, melatonin. The pineal gland produces melatonin too, and it stores it. But you have mitochondrial melatonin, which is 96% that comes from light. That's why between daylight and 11 o'clock in the morning, when red light is at its highest, and near infrared and far infrared, you're making mitochondrial DNA and mitochondrial uh, melatonin. Boom. Quick question. You could be a doctor. Get out of here, Mary. I'm just getting warmed up. Go on, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Oh my god. Okay, bye there. Okay. EFT. Say what? EFT, emotional freedom. Yeah, it's good. It's you know, tap? Yeah, it's good. Anything you do. Positive mental thoughts. Look, if I see a bad word in this man, I've just ruined and changed his DNA in his body. Okay? Dr. Emoto, look up the water and see what happens when you say good things to water and you freeze it and you look underneath an electron microscope and what it looks like versus saying bad things and stuff. Yeah. Any, anything is important. Yeah. Does everybody benefit from taking these diagnostic tests or is it just people who think they have issues? Anybody. I do it all the time on myself. I want to live to be healthy and young. Do I got a beautiful wife to take care of. Huh? Do you find issues even though you feel fine? Nobody's health. Nobody's, nobody's 100%. Nobody's health. Yeah. Trust me, nobody's, not in this environment, not in this world. But you know what? Everybody has a different tolerance. You know, everyone's a different tolerance. I could punch you in the eye and wouldn't even phase you. I could hit me in the eye and you cry like a baby. Everybody's got different tolerances, okay? Tolerance. So a lot of people have cancer. They don't even know they have cancer until it's stage four and it's too late. Other people have things and they know it and then they find out. But yeah, everyone has, we all have our burdens. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's perfect. Do you have a holistic um, cure for ED? ED? Yeah. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, that's all the memories, anyhow. <laughs> ED. Oh my God. We're in the villages, I can see it. Okay. <laughs> Village people. That's Smoking marijuana? Or taking it? Don't smoke it. Because it'll hurt you. Smoking a joint is like smoking eight to ten cigarettes. It'll destroy the lung feel. Take it in a form of CBD oil or gummies. I don't care what you do, just don't smoke it because you're going to destroy your lung feel. And do not vape. Vaping is as bad as not worse. Our kids are going to be destroyed with this vaping crap. What about putting the marijuana in food? Marijuana food? Well, if you want to get high, I mean, what the hell? I mean, it depends on how you want to feel. Yeah, I mean, you know, let me tell you something. CBD, you have you have, you have receptor sites in your brain, CBD receptor sites, okay? There are 18 to 20 different types of CBD oils. And these 18 to 20 different types of CBD oils all have different functions of the brain. There are people that take CBD, like uh, Rick Simpson oil. You ever hear of Rick Simpson oil? Cures cancer, okay? All kinds of different things. So that's why everywhere you look, where there was a, a gas station, a bank, or whatever, it's now a head shop. Everyone's selling CBD. <laughs> because it's, it's phenomenal. It's good stuff. I think it's going overboard, but I mean, you know, what the heck, you know? If there's a buck to be made, Americans are going to make it one way or another. Question? I just want to know what you're doing to combat uh, EMF. EMF? Personally? Yeah. I don't have a cell phone with me. And I get crucified because of that. When I go to sleep at night, I turn off my Wi-Fi. I unplug it. Okay? I never have my cell phone on my body because when that fires off, I'm just getting radiated all the heck. All right? Never put it to your head because it's like putting your head in a microwave oven. Always keep at least three foot away. And when I talk in that damn thing, my hand starts to get hot and I just drop it. Because I'm extremely sensitive to EMF exposure. And it's killing people because it opens up the calcium channels of the brain and now we're having all kinds of brain dysfunction, manias and so on and so forth. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
EMF is going to kill America. No. Yeah. And how you feel? Yeah. Exactly. I can't. I can't handle it. Yeah. Right there, right here, right where we're all sitting. Yeah, on the back. Okay, using airplane mode, does that help when you no. cell phones on? Well, I mean, it does, no. but don't put the damn thing on yet. Don't ever, don't ever have a cell phone on you, ever. Women put it up here, and they wonder why they get breast cancer. Men put it in their pants, and wonder why they get testicular cancer. And they put it in their fanny right there, and they get prostate. I mean, Jesus, you know? <laughs> we all grew up, but we didn't have any of this crap. We didn't have computers. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have all this stuff. What's the matter with us all? And look at our kids and our grandkids. Jesus. God help them. They're all going to die. Early. Hi, Mary. Hurry up. Come on. Another question. That guy in the back. He's my friend, Mr. Boyd. Yeah. Huh? 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 Uh-oh. You know why? Because the, the chocolate has caffeine. The caffeine destroys the adrenal. The adrenal shuts down the production of DHEA. There goes the hormones. Boom, 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 boom. Someone had a question on hot flashes. You? Because of the fact they're deficient in essential mega, they're, they're deficient in iodine, and they're also deficient in essential fatty acids. That's easy to treat. A woman today should be taking between 50 and 75 milligrams of iodine, iodine a day, because 80% of all breast cancer is iodine deficiency because it's first positive. 15% make 95 is a vitamin D3 deficiency. That's 95% of all your breast cancers right there. If you took 10,000, 20,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day, 50 to 75 milligrams of iodine, iodine a day, there'd be no breast cancer. But if you took that same amount and then put in at least, at least two to 4,000 milligrams of essential fatty acids, okay, hot flashes are gone. That easy. Thank you. Huh? You can buy nutrient companies, they have it, or else you can go and do and take them in. I don't know. Fish is good. Fish is good. Sardines, anchovies, cod liver. Keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> Okay, let's give Dr. Bedanik a good round of applause.